Hey everybody, back again. It's uh, daytime, obviously. I'm in a cemetery. Try and see if I can. You might not see it because of the background blur and the light, but we'll walk around it a little bit anyway. Uh, clouds blowing in and out, so the light's going to keep changing. And I got super windy, so we have to deal with that too. Got my little windsock on the microphone there. Hopefully that helps. Anyway, we're going to talk about apps today. Apps in general, as an investigative tool, do they work? Are they worth using? Are they crap? How do they compare to everything else that you can use to do an investigation? I see a lot of comments about apps in the Facebook groups I'm in, on my videos. So I just thought the best thing to do as open-minded investigators is have a conversation. So let's talk about apps and uh, walk around the cemetery. Let's go. So apps, what are they? First off, they are software that you download into your phone that supposedly utilizes the sensors built into your phone to communicate with spirits. Uh, much the same way they will manipulate radio frequencies using a spirit box. Well, a phone is basically a radio receiver. Uh, it receives a bunch of different radio waves, interprets them, and you can talk, you communicate with data. There's a lot of different things that a phone can do. It's got a lot of built-in sensors into it, from gyroscopes to touch sensors. Uh, some have temperature sensors. So you can get a lot of things out of the little thing in your pocket. And there are some that feel that you can use this as an investigative tool for paranormal investigations. I happen to agree. Uh, that said, caveat, I don't think it's the only tool. I think you should have multiple tools. But I do think that there is value in using a phone on an investigation. First and foremost, much like a, uh, a photographer once said, the best camera is the one you have with you, meaning even a cell phone is a great camera because you've always got it with you. If it can take a photo, it's great. Well, same theory for me anyway with investigating. You've always got your phone with you. You can always use it to do something. So sometimes it's just going to be the best tool you have and better to use it and do something than to pass completely on an investigation just because you don't have anything with you. You're always going to have your phone with you because most of us nowadays regularly have our phones with us. So it just makes for a great, great tool in that sense. Now I think as investigators, we should be aiming to use as many tools as we can to try and get multiple pieces of evidence using multiple pieces of equipment. I don't think any one piece of equipment is a be-all and end-all piece of equipment. Uh, I personally love to get multiple responses, multiple similar or same responses on different pieces of equipment. And it doesn't happen all that often. Uh, in fact, very rarely. Spirit Box, various different apps, just use them all and collect evidence. I don't think that we should be judging a single piece of evidence on a single device as proof that that something is there. Uh, that's, that's my take. Anyway, I think we should all, as investigators, be striving to gather multiple pieces of information on multiple pieces of equipment and get some matching up. So if we get, say, we hear a name on a spirit box, well, it would be great to get the name on the apps as well. Multiple apps, ideally. Uh, but that said, a lot of apps have built-in word banks. They may not have the name you're looking for. Uh, the, the, the one exception to a built-in word bank is GhostTube Vox and I think Necrometer as well. Don't use built-in word banks. Um, and there are people 
That's gotten a little bright. Let's just darken that down just a touch. Sun's out now. So there are people who, who do not believe. Wow, really bright. We'll stay under here. There, there are multiple people who believe that even those apps that don't have built-in word banks are just getting the data from somewhere else. And that's, that's a valid argument. Um, as, as investigators, we should be trying very hard to disprove what we get just as much as we are trying to prove the existence of something and communicate with something. So we also have to be very careful to not just blindly believe a single piece of evidence from a single device as the be all end all proof that we are looking for. I think too much of us get a little too excited about one thing and we don't do enough to kind of confirm it. All right, let's keep walking around the cemetery. Now, for me, as someone who makes videos about doing paranormal things and paranormal research, the apps are great because they provide me with an additional camera angle. I can film through them, well, some of them anyway. And so, from strictly from a video making point of view, I like the fact that they do offer that sort of flexibility and that different perspective that I have personally got probably one of my single greatest pieces of evidence and I'll try and remember to put a card up there I know I'm bad for that but I was actually recording through an app and it wasn't the app itself that I got the evidence but I got a voice saying hello I don't know where the voice came from and to this day I still can't figure it out but it was actually while recording through an app. I can't explain it. I don't know. I don't know. Is it paranormal? I don't know. Was it a glitch of some kind with something? I don't know. I, I refuse to definitively say it was something paranormal, but it was interesting and I was happy to get it and it was through an app. So not going to discount apps and I wish personally that people wouldn't be so quick to discount because we can use them but and here's where we get into the but there are developers out there who sell apps and who claim make certain claims they are crap um, I've tested them you've probably watched the tests on my channel of some really, really bad apps. So they are out there. There are developers who are just trying to make a quick buck and preying on people who are trying to communicate with dead love. Uh, I got totally lost there. There are developers who are just trying to prey on people who are distraught and trying to communicate with loved ones who have passed. They are marketing apps to people with the promise that they will get immediate communications with their deceased loved ones. And I, I try and watch out for those. I, I do a lot of tests. And if I feel an app is that kind of app, I'm gonna point it out. And you can watch any of the app tests on my channel. I've got a whole playlist dedicated to app tests where I just try them out and give you my honest thoughts on whether I think they're any good or not because there are a lot that are, are really bad. There are a lot that are just trying to take money from people. Uh, that's that. Now I will say, I've had conversations with a developer and I will leave them unnamed uh, to protect them. They are investigators. They are trying to do the same things we're doing, only they're developing their own tools much the same way that people will modify their own radios and such. These people are developing software, writing software, and creating apps using the sensors in the phone. They are genuine investigators who want to know the truth, just like the rest of us. And they're curious. They have no ill intention. They're not just trying to make a quick buck, but they are developing this tool and 
if they develop a tool that's useful, they, they do deserve to be paid for that as well. So there are some paid apps that are from developers who are also paranormal investigators, and they're trying to do the same thing we all are. That's it. Anyway, let's, uh, let's give some final thoughts, close out this video. Nice, simple, short one today, just something that needed to be addressed. Let's go. So, to summarize, should we use apps as a tool? Of course, we should use every tool that we have at our disposal to try and gather as much good evidence as we can. Should we only use apps? Well, if that's all you have, then of course. Um, but there are even apps that will do simple recordings and much like a tape recorder in the past and other digital recorders, you can at least record and try and capture EVPs. There are apps that do that that have nothing to do with paranormal research per se, they're just a recorder app. So you don't even have to use paranormal apps. There are just other apps you can use to do paranormal research. So yes, we should use apps along with every other tool in our kit to try and generate as much evidence as we possibly can and try and verify and confirm as much evidence as we possibly can. As, as investigators, we should always be open to possibilities. We should always leave ourselves open to the fact that technologies sometimes can work. And we should be open to experiment and experiment and experiment because that's, that's what we have to do. We have to verify, we have to confirm, we have to be diligent, and I'm just going to back up into the shadow a bit more here. But check yourself, check your evidence, verify it with multiple methods, if possible. But if all you can afford or all you have for the time being is a phone, use it. Go back later, check your results when you can get more gear, when you have more gear or go back multiple times and see if the same thing happens again and again. Repeatability is super important. Getting the same results is super important. Using a piece of equipment, if you can get the same thing over and over again at one location on multiple visits, maybe there's something to it. But to completely write off apps just because they're new and they're on a phone, they're just fancy radio wave receivers with a lot of sensors. Let's use them to their full potential. Anyway, if you like these videos, please hit that like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the notification bell so you know that these videos are going live Sunday nights, 8 o'clock. And using apps, spirit boxes, and any other technology you might have, let's find something.